Hey there, Stampers. Happy Friday. Welcome to this week's Facebook Live. My name is Sherry Roth. I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Alberta, Canada. And I'm excited to be here to share some projects using the Awesome Otters uh, adorable celebration offering. Um, okay, I'm just updating my iPad here. Okay, here we go. All right, and we're a little bit crooked. Okay, so I just wanted to remind you before we get into the project that there are only 10 days left of celebration. So celebration um, has been going on since the beginning of January and there's lots of opportunities to earn free product, whether you shop, host, or join Stampin' Up! So there's lots of great opportunities and today I'm gonna share um, this celebration offering stamp set with you, a couple samples with it, as well as the Simply Marvelous DSP. So every Friday I've been featuring a different product from the celebration brochure and um, I'm gonna run out of Fridays uh, so I decided to combine these two and then next week, I think there's only one left. Oh, actually, you know what? I haven't done anything or did I do something with catching butterflies? I can't remember if I did or not, um, but we still have one of my favorites left and that is the special moments greeting set. Now I've been using that kind of all along in some lots of my samples because it's such a great set, but next week we'll focus primarily on that and different ways to use it. So you can look forward to that. And then I also wanted to remind you that every week, because February is my birthday month, um, every week I am giving away a different gift when you spend $60 or more with me. And your name can be entered into the grant, the grand prize draw, which I have two grand prizes, which I'm gonna share with you right away here. So this week's gift, if you shop with me between, oh, what is the date, uh, February, I think it was February 15th and 22nd, um, then you will receive your choice of either the card kits to create these two cards or a little gift packaging sampler. Okay, it's got lots of different kind of gift packaging um, bits and bobs that you can use. And then everybody who has shopped with me during the month of February automatically gets their name entered into a draw, a grand prize draw, which I'll draw towards the beginning of March. And the two grand prize draws are, somebody will win all of the gifts that I was offering over the course of the month. And there's still two more to come next week. So um, they won't have to choose. They will get eight card kits, They'll get the gift packaging sampler, the whale of a time sequence, the ombre specialty paper, and then whatever I offer next week as well. And then the second grand prize is a Stamparatus. I love the Stamparatus stamp positioning tool. So this is a great, and this is a, this is a pretty sweet gift. Um, if you don't have one, you definitely want to make sure you get your name entered in for that. All right, okay, so let's, Actually, one more thing before we get started. I remember to draw the names for last week's projects. So last week I focused on the Daffodil Afternoon DSP and I combined it with the Daffodil Daydream uh, bundle from the January to June mini catalog and created these two cards. So this fun gatefold card and then this kind of little peekaboo card. Um, and the way that you can get your name entered to win the projects that I create today is simply by participating in a conversation. So comment on the Facebook Live if you're watching, just say hi, ask questions, just make me feel like I'm not sitting here talking to myself. <laughs> um, and if you're watching the replay, same thing. If you've got questions along the way, feel free to ask and I will get back to you with an answer. All right, and if you are catching the replay on YouTube, I keep the track of those comments as well. All right, so the lucky winners for last week, we've got Christine Miles who won this card and Sue Kos, who won this card, and I believe I have both of their addresses, so I will pop those in the mail for them this weekend. Okay, I think I've got all of my housekeeping done. I think we can go ahead and get started. All right, so like I said, we're gonna use this cute little set today, which, you know what, if I'm honest, I did not ink this up until I started planning for this Facebook Live. So I've had it for a very long time and just have not had a chance to ink it up. So I was really looking forward to playing with it today. 
Okay, so let's set that aside. All right, and then I wanted to share a little peek at this Simply Marvelous DSP. So this is a six by six paper pack that you can earn for free um, with a $60 purchase. And it's got these beautiful marble patterns on this one side. And then look at the back side. So fun, such beautiful paper. And with that new collection that's coming out next month, let me just grab it. I think I can reach the stamp set here. I think this side would go great, especially the blue and the, the um, Coastal Cabana. I think those would go great with this Waves of Inspiration bundle that's going to be offered next month. Okay, so let's set those aside and grab our pieces. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through the measurements in case you want to recreate it, but you can always check my blog, uh, stampedtreasures.com, um, for any of the uh, measurements. I've got them posted for any of the Facebook Lives that I do. Um, I always share the measurements, okay? So this is Coastal Cabana. It measures five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. And then I've got another piece of Coastal Cabana that measures four by five and a quarter. And I've gone ahead and I've embossed that using this painted texture embossing folder. And I love this embossing folder. It's, I, I just love the texture that it gives and it's, you know, it's not too busy, but it adds enough detail. And I think it goes really well with any kind of um, water type images. So I've gone ahead and I've embossed that. And then I've got a four by five and a quarter inch piece of white for the inside. I've got another piece of white that measures two and three eighths by five and an eighth. I've got a scrap of white for stamping. And then I've die cut using the layering circles dies, the second smallest circle. Okay, so we're gonna keep these three pieces, actually we're gonna keep all of these white pieces out because we're going to use those first and then I've got a piece of black that measures two and a half by five and a quarter and a piece of vellum that measures uh, this is the third smallest circle from the layering circles so we'll set that aside and then of course I've got some white baker's twine this is about an eight inch piece well six to eight inches tied in a bow and then I grabbed this DSP but you could definitely use the Simply Marvelous DSP. I'm gonna, just gonna cover my envelope flap. And I didn't have a scrap big enough and I didn't wanna cut into a full six by six. So that's why I'm using this one, just to kind of tie in the envelope with the inside of the card. Okay, so we'll set those things aside. We're gonna bring in this and this. We're gonna start with these two pieces. I'm just gonna grab a scrap piece of paper to put on here and for this particular project um, we're going to use this guy and we're not going to color it in so i wanted to show you that um, there are several different ways that you can use line art images and not feel like you have to color them in every time so i'm going to share one of those ideas with you today so i'm going to use my memento ink and I'm gonna stamp this on this narrower piece of white in a few places. So we'll stamp it right here. And then we'll do it up here. Just make sure it's straight here. And then we'll add one more up here. Let's do a little bit further off just so it's not right on top of this guy. And then we'll add one right here. Okay, set that aside. I'm gonna bring in this piece and I'm gonna stamp one of these guys in the lower right corner. And then I'm gonna bring in my envelope and stamp one right here. Okay, I can set that guy aside and we're going to bring in the You Are Otterly Awesome and our white circle. Ink that up, stamp that on our circle. Okay, and I think I'm done with 
the memento. Okay, so now I wanted some wanted to add something else to my project. I wanted to add a little bit more color and so I decided to do something a little bit different. So I pulled in the Biggest Wish stamp set. I love this stamp set. Um, I love the combination of fonts. I love the block lettering here. I love the size. It's such a great set. So we're going to use the word birthday, but we're going to use it in bits and pieces. So this is where my scrap is going to come in handy. And I'm just gonna pull in my stamp and pierce mat just because this is photopolymer and the, the image or the words are a little bit more on the bold side. So I find having a little cushion underneath helps. Okay, let me just see who's watching here. Good morning, Shirley and Joan and Tracy and Darlene and Susan and Kathy and Betty. Oh, your granddaughter Betty is gonna love this set. Thank you for sharing. Hi, Judith and Sue, welcome. Happy Friday, everyone. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we are going to take the Coastal Cabana ink and I'm going to ink up, I need the H. So I'm gonna ink up just kind of the last half of the word. I'm really only concerned with the letter H and I'm gonna stamp that down on here. And then set that aside and I need my stamp cleaner. Where is my stamp cleaner? Here we go. Okay, and then we're gonna clean it and I'm gonna ink it up using some Bermuda Bay. And this time I'm really all I need is the letter D, so I'm going to ink up kind of the last third and stamp that down. And then I'm going to clean it again. And I'm going to bring back my memento ink. And this time I need the letter B, so I'm just going to ink up the first part. So some of you are probably wondering, well, why don't you just use your stamp and write markers and then you can get just the letter that you need. But if you've been watching me for a while, you know that I'm not a huge fan of our stamp and write markers on photopolymer stamps. I now don't get me wrong, I love our stamp and write markers. They work so beautifully on our red rubber stamps, but I find on photopolymer stamps, especially if they are more solid images like this, I find that they get really streaky and you don't get as crisp of an image as you do when you use stamps as an ink pad. So that's why, and because I'm separating all of these anyways, uh, it's not going to matter. Okay. All right. So let's see here. Okay. So like I said, I wanted the H from the Coastal Cabana. So I go, went ahead and I cut that out. I wanted the D from the Bermuda Bay and I wanted the B from the basic black. So happy birthday. So that's what I did from that. So that is just kind of a little bit of a different way to use this stamp set. So if you look at all of these, these words combined, you've got a lot of different letters. So you can really, e really easily spell lots of different readings or lots of different things for scrapbook pages, for cards, for any of your projects. So just consider that, especially with a block lettering like this where they're easy to kind of fuzzy cut and separate. Okay, so we'll set those aside. Now we're going to bring back these little otters. And I felt that they needed just a little bit of something else. So what I decided to do was just to bring in a little bit of sparkle and use my clear Wink of Stella and basically just color in So I'm just, I'm coloring in the splashes and then I'm just, just below where kind of the, the ripples are in the water. I'm 
just adding a bit of shimmer. And this, I know this isn't showing up on camera and I'll bring it up a little closer to see if you can see it, but it's just a nice subtle way to add a little bit of shimmer. And I think this is great because then this card, it's not too girly. You could use it for a little boy or a little girl. And even though it's got that little bit of shimmer, it's just like water, the sun glistening off of water. going here is there anybody who is watching who does not have a wink of Stella pen I tell you this the the wink of Stella I think is a staple it's just so easy to add just a little bit of shimmer to a project it's not messy it dries really quickly You can add it over top of colored images. Okay, and we'll do a little bit on the envelope as well. Okay. All right, so let's bring it up and see. It's so subtle, I, I doubt that you guys can see it on camera. Yeah, you can't really see the shimmer, but there, trust me, it's there. All right, okay, so let's bring back the rest of our pieces here and finish assembling. Okay, let's start with our card base. We'll use our bone folder, make it nice and crisp. And then we're going to add our layer of embossed cardstock. And because this is embossed and it has some texture, I'm going to add adhesive all the way around and even just a little bit in the middle. Normally I don't use this much, near this much adhesive. That's going to go in the center. We'll have about an eighth of an inch border all the way around. Okay, and then we're going to bring in this black layer. This piece is going to go on our block and this time we'll have about a sixteenth of an inch border all the way around the edges and then this can get attached to our card front does anybody have any plans this weekend this is going to go on here and I'm going to leave a little bit of that textured cardstock showing on the left hand side Let's make sure it's straight. Okay, and then we're gonna bring in our vellum and here, let me flip this over and do it on here. Maybe you can see it a little bit better. And we're going to add just a little bit of adhesive to the back of our letters and attach them to this circle. There we go. Okay, and then behind here, now this has a few, oh, my layer shifted. Probably when I flipped it over, it wasn't quite set yet. That's okay, most of this side is gonna get covered up over anyways. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is this is going to sit over top of this. Now, there is quite a bit of dimension with the dimension that's on the cardstock and then the, the two layers of cardstock here. So I am just gonna take a dimensional and put it under this side here. So just a little mini dimensional. And then I'm gonna put just a little bit on here. And then this is going to sit 
right on there like that. And then we're going to take this guy and I'll put a couple dimensionals on the back of this guy. And then this is going to slide right underneath here like that. And then my little baker's twine bow, I'm going to use a mini glue dot. So I'm just using um, some leftover mini glue dots from Paper Pumpkin. Did anybody get their Paper Pumpkin kit yesterday? I got mine and I created the cards yesterday and I've got plans for a scrapbook layout. It's been a few months since I've done a video for, with a scrapbook layout for Paper Pumpkin because things have been busy and there have been other things going on. But this weekend you can expect something with that. Such a cute little set. Okay, so we've got our card. Uh, we need to add a little bit. I always like to accessorize. So I pulled out the polished dots because I think these clear ones, they kind of look like bubbles. Oh, that sounds fun, Kathy. You get to craft with your grandkids. All right, so we're gonna add one here. We'll add another one up here. And then we'll take one of these little ones and pop it over here. All right, so there's the outside of our card. And then we're gonna take the inside, just add a little bit of adhesive. Pop this on the inside. And then we can do our envelope flap. So I'm just going to use some multi-purpose glue and add it around the edges, not going too close to the edge. And we'll do it this way. Line this up with the corner. Just like that and then trim around the edges and then we've got a cute little matching envelope flap for those of you who are just joining in we are playing with the awesome otters stamp set which is a free celebration offering, but only until the end of the month. All right, so there we go. There's our first awesome otter card. Isn't it cute? I love it, so cute. And remember, it's got that shimmer on it, which just kind of steps it up just a little bit. Okay, all right, so that was the first one. Now let's go to the next one here. All right, so my pieces for this one, We've got a thick white card base, five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. We've got, I've taken one of that, of those Simply Marvelous sheets. So this was a six by six inch sheet and I cut it down so that it measures six inches by five and a quarter inches. So I've got this three quarter inch strip, which I kept in here because I might add it to the inside of the card. And then I've got another piece that measures two and, well, it's probably two and a half, but I need about two and a quarter inches to do the envelope flap. So this is a scrap that I had that was big enough. I've got a big, a larger scrap of white because we're going to do some stamping and some coloring on there. And then I've got a narrower scrap of white. It's about half an inch and it'll get trimmed down a little bit. Okay, so we're going to start by doing our stamping. So let's bring these two pieces in, <coughs> excuse me. All right, so we're gonna bring in our memento. We're gonna bring in this adorable little otter. And let's put this this way. And we're gonna stamp one of him there. We're gonna bring back this guy that we used on the first card. We'll stamp him 
here and then we're going to clean this guy so we can use the block and we're going to stamp the other otter. So we're going to use all three otters on this particular card. I love this little guy holding the fish. He's so cute. All right, so I'll ink this guy up and stamp it down. And then on this narrow little strip, we're going to stamp it's birthday time. That's not very straight. Let's try it again. It's really hard to see on this white background. Still not very straight. That's better. Okay. All right. I think that is all the stamping that we need to do. Now we are going to color in using our stamp and blends. Um, and then I've got another sample to share with you. I, the first card that I did, I colored in using our water painters and some shimmery white cardstock. So I'm going to share the look of the two of them. They're both, they're both going to be the exact same card. It's just that they're going to look quite different because they were colored in different ways. Okay, so I have, I've got petal pink and light calypso coral here and I'm just going to color in this little fish. I'm just going to add a little bit of coral to the to the fish and then I'll use my dark petal pink to color in the rest. And then I'll do the face of the fish just in light petal pink. Okay. And then I've got a combination of, what do I have here? Okay, so I've got Smoky Slate and Gray Granite Stampin' Blends in both the dark and the light. So I'm going to take the dark smoky slate and I'm going to color in the noses. Now I'm probably not going to color in all three of these guys because I will color them in the same way. So I might just choose one of the larger ones and color it and show you how I colored it. I did find that there wasn't a ton of difference between the gray granite and the smoky slate. One is a little bit more brown than the other. Um, but between the dark and the light, there wasn't a ton of difference. Now I don't remember what I colored in what. Okay, we're gonna color this guy. So I've got my dark gray granite and just kind of in some areas here, I'm going to add a little bit of dark. Okay, and then I'm gonna come in with my light gray granite. I can't remember if I use light gray granite or if I use light smoky slate. No, I must have used light smoky slate. Okay, so I'm going to come in with my light smoky slate, slate and basically just color in everything except his little belly. You can also use shades of brown for these guys. And there might have been more, if I had done them in brown, it might have been more, um, might have been more contrast between the colors and I could get the look that I wanted. I really wanted there to be some shading on here 
and because the colors are so similar I didn't get a lot of shading but I'll share with you what I did to kind of give it a little bit of a different look Oh, this one smells really strong. I normally don't notice the smell. This one has quite the alcohol smell. Okay, so you can see that you can't even tell where I colored in the dark on that. So we'll come back to that in a minute. Now I'm gonna take the light, well, this is dark gray granite. I want light gray granite, I think light gray granite. I'm pretty sure that's the color I want. Let's just test it here. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm going to take light gray granite and I'll bring it up a little bit closer. I'm not sure if on camera, probably not because of the shadows, but this you can see is a little bit more brown. So I liked the contrast between the gray and the brown. So that did help. So, and I'm just being careful going around this fish because I don't want it to bleed into the fish. And I am going to leave a little bit of white on his belly. Okay, so that's what it looks like, which is really cute. But I would like there, to, I'd like it to not look so perfect. Well, not that it looks perfect, but so even, I guess is the word that I would, I, is a better choice. Okay, so I'm gonna bring in my color lifter and I'm just gonna color over top of this. And so this color lifter, it kind of, it adds some moisture to it and kind of gives it a little bit of a different look. And then I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna go around the outer edge too. I'm going to be careful not to go too close to the edges just because you are adding extra alcohol, like another layer of alcohol and you don't want it to bleed. Okay, so let me bring it up so that you can see. Can you see, you can already see how it's kind of changing. It's giving it a little bit of added texture by doing that. So that was my solution to getting that look of having like kind of a variation in color rather than having it seem like it's all one consistent color. Okay, super cute. So then the other two will get colored in the same way and then you'll fussy cut them. So here we've got the three bits fussy cut and I don't need this water because I'm gonna use different water. So I've got all three of those cut out. We'll set this aside and we are going to bring in our card base. So fold that in half and then we're going to bring in our largest piece of um, the Simply Marvelous DSP and we want it going this way. Okay so we've got the five and a quarter inch measurement going across and I'm going to take this and I'm going to tear it. Okay, and then I'm going to stick this down at the top. So I am going to leave about an eighth of an inch border around the edges. Now I'm going to take this straight edge. I am right handed, so I'm holding it with my left hand and tearing towards me with my right hand. So if you were left handed, hold with your right hand and tear towards you and you get the white um, core of the paper showing which I think kind of gives it um, the look of kind of the the white part of waves so I'm just gonna kind of curl this up just a little bit paper tearing is one of my favorite things to do right now so this is gonna go at the bottom but we're gonna add some more layers so then I'm gonna tear another piece Okay, and again, I'll curl this up just a little bit. 
Uh, it's going to get tucked underneath here like that. So you can see we're kind of creating some little waves and then this. So this, I don't have the white part showing. So let's see, what should we do here? Let's just tear this a little bit more. Okay, so we've got three layers there. And you know what, I want one more layer. So this piece that I was going to use on the inside, I'm actually going to use it. And this is gonna get tucked underneath here. So we've got kind of, kind of like a bunch of ripples. Okay, so we're gonna start by adding dimensionals to the back of this bottom piece. And I'm only going to add the dimensionals to the bottom bit for now, I can go back and add more afterwards because I want to be able to tuck my layers in. So now this, I'm gonna line it up with this edge and this edge and leave about an eighth of an inch from the bottom. Let's put this down here. Okay, that looks about right. And then I believe it was this guy next. Yeah, and this guy's gonna go on with dimensionals as well. So I'm just gonna use two for now. I can go back and add more dimensionals. And again, I'm gonna make sure it's lined up with the edges. And then this piece was next. And this piece can go on flat. We don't need dimensionals on this. So I'll just add a little bit of adhesive on either side, tuck that in. The one thing that I am ensuring that I do, I don't wanna be able to see like the, the bottom edge of this DSP. So I'm just making sure that I put it down far enough so you can't see that bottom edge. And then this guy, we can pop this guy. Okay, this, I'm not gonna add adhesive to that just yet because I wanna position my little otters before we do that. Okay, so now we, where did our third, there it is. Okay, so we're gonna start with this guy. This guy's going to get tucked right in here and I'm gonna use a little bit of flat adhesive on the bottom but then I'm gonna pop his head up on a dimensional. He's gonna get tucked right in here, just like that. And then this guy is gonna go on flat and he's gonna pop right in behind here, just like that. So now I can attach this. And see that straight edge? I'm just gonna make sure it's popped behind this other guy so you don't see it. And then this guy is gonna go right here and we are gonna pop it up using some dimensionals. But before we add him to our card, we gotta bring in some baker's twine, right? Can't have a card without baker's twine. So I'm just gonna cut about an eight, eight inch piece and add just a little bit of adhesive to the back here and I'm gonna curl this. This is probably too big. I'm gonna go around maybe two fingers. And just pop that on there like that. Now we can add him to our card base. Just like that. And last thing to do, well, not quite the last thing. We're going to use our scissors to angle cut these, the ends. And it's a little bit wider than what I would like. So I'm just gonna take some longer bladed scissors and just trim this a little bit more. And 
and then this is going to have flat adhesive on this side and a dimensional on this side. Okay, and then the last thing to do is to accessorize. So I'm gonna bring back some of my bubbles, my polished dots, and add those. So we'll use a nice big one here, another big one up here, and then a little one up here. Okay, and then our envelope flap, we can grab this piece of DSP and add that to it. And you could also stamp um, an otter on the inside. Now if you do stamp and color in using the Stampin' Blends, it will bleed through the back of the card. So you might want to do it as a layer and then cut it and then stick it in rather than coloring right on the card base just so that the, the Stampin' Blends don't bleed through the back of your card. All right, and now we've got a matching envelope. I know, aren't they cute, Lori? So cute, I love these little otters. So sweet. All right, so like I said at the beginning, before I created this card, I would share an alternate sample. It's the same card, but I colored the otters in differently. All right, so there we go. Isn't it cute? love it. So this one I used the Balmy Blue DSP from the Simply Marvelous and I colored them in using, um, they're stamped with stays on on shimmery white and then colored in using a water painter and some ink pads. So it gives it a very different look. You can see that it's much softer. I mean they're both super cute but it does look very different. Okay, and then here's our first card that we created. So we've got that guy, that guy, and then this one. And then, do you remember last week I shared this card? So this was one of the cards that I shared, a little peekaboo card using the Daffodil Daydream DSP. Well, I wanted to use that same idea with this stamp set. So I used, again, the Simply Marvelous DSP. I added the little ribbon, I added a little tag with the greeting, and then we've got the little otter on the inside. And this, again, was stamped on um, shimmery white, and then I colored in using the water painter. So there's an idea. And then this was a swap that I received. And I don't know who it's from. It doesn't have a name, so I, I, can, I can't remember. So here's another one where she used the layering diorama dies, which is super cute because it kind of looks like, wa it looks like water. It looks like a puddle of water, right? So fun. I love it. It's so cute. So there are some ideas using the Awesome Otters stamp set and the Simply Marvelous DSP. Remember that if you shop with me before the end of February, you'll get entered to win the two, you'll get your name entered to win one of the two grand prizes that I'm giving away. And remember that you also get the opportunity to choose your gift this week as well. All right, so thanks so much for watching. Uh, have a great weekend. I hope you have a chance to get crafty and I will see you next week. Take care. Bye guys.